Hi, welcome to Real Magic Review. My name is Steve Faulkner and this is Ladani Live in London. Before we do this, usual things, please like, please subscribe, please check out cardmagiccourse.com. That's where you can learn all the moves you're ever going to need and more. I've just recorded a load more stuff uh, out of this world, actually. Finally recorded that. Why did I take so long to record that and put it on there? Uh, so have a look at that. And it's a classic. I've really enjoyed revisiting that anyway. But I digress. Uh, check out cardmagiccourse.com and do all that good stuff. And please tell people about this channel. You know, I'm not saying share it all over social media, but if you want to, that'd be lovely. But if you know magicians that might benefit from the channel, do let them know. Right, I got this a long time ago, so apologies to Jason for um, <laughs> taking like months. It was May he sent it to me, me this. And I really wanted to see it. And the reason I didn't watch it was because I wanted to sit and kind of take my time watching it, because I really like Jason's stuff. I saw him lecture at the session. Uh, a few years ago, and one of my early, early reviews was of Game Changer, his book, which I still love, by the way. And, and these are, uh, I think most of the routines are from here, or versions of them, maybe a couple from uh, his first book, but I'm not totally sure, don't quote me on that. So this is a lecture, really. It's a live performance from his theatre show, and I think you get about, um, I don't know, about a 50 minute performance, and then you get the obviously the explanations. You also get a Magic Castle with commentary, which is great. You know, you get to watch him perform at the Magic Castle with a commentary to give you the theory behind it, which is so important. And there's some extra bits and bobs there. Bobs there. So first of all, to run through what you get on this, there are five effects, I think. I have got them written down. I'm going to be totally honest. I'm not going to do that thing of pretending to look at, oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> just think, or looking over there like, you know, dreamingly, pretending I'm thinking of something. They're written there. Uh, first of all, nick of time. I love this routine. I love all routines like this where you get... By the way, he gets people out on stage with him and he's got a lot of uh, chemistry with these people. Now, I do... Well, I, we'll get into that in a minute. Nick of time is a four... Uh, selections and he wants... He gets the selections, lose them in the deck and then he has this whole thing of... of he's going to take 60 seconds to find the four aces and then he's actually going to find their selections as well and it's it's part of what i liked about game changer is this er this element of challenge that are in all the tricks now some people which i talked about way back about um game changers don't like this they say to challenge a spectator and all that it's the way he does it i really like and on that again I'm i have talked about this before as well he has this kind of arrogance which is as he says is part of the of the performance it's really important you know that it's all kind of like this thing if i don't mess things up you know all that kind of stuff is is all part of the performance and when i saw this and actually all of the routines on this i did wish i was watching it for a an audience of lay people i, I always used to find this with darwin ortiz as well it is that i i kind of would watch them and go oh, i'd love to to see how lay people see this. Because not that I would question that, I think it would play stronger. That's what I'm saying for lay people. Because there are certain things that magicians kind of expect, obviously when, when you put four cards down that are the selections and you can't find them, we know as magicians that there's gonna be a kicker. But I think that that stuff would play super strong. And I, would, I do wish, not, I know it's, I'm, I don't do it, all right? So I'm not, this isn't a judgment, but I do wish sometimes that even the Magic Castle or Magic Circle could just get a load of lay people into film just to get that energy that you would feel of, of that um, DVD or download. And then you could kind of feel part of the audience and, and learn of magicians what play really strong. Because there's, there's for example, there's a bit where he does like a perfect circular um, spread, spread on the table. And he does that. He does this lovely, like, nearly a whole circle and the cards are just so beautiful. And he does that as a kind of throwaway thing. And you know that if that's in front of lay people, they're just going to be like... <gasps> Wow, and, and you would get that verbal response, then you could play off that. And I, I, cause this, I know this because even when you do a normal fan, you know, to lay people, I do this thing where I kind of went from taking a photo, and they always go, they, they often clap, you know, it's something really beautiful about it. So that's just a little bit of an aside, but an important one. Please start making everybody DVDs with lay people in the audience. Right, uh, Jason's uh, any card at any number. Again, great routine. We all love any card at any number. We won't discuss whether it's the best effect <laughs> or not. We've, we've all done that. Uh, but his version is really, really good, really clean. And importantly, like all of this stuff, it has a whole kind of, this is, um, he's, he's got a whole build up to it where he, where he does a, I think it's shuffle tracking. 
routine, and all these things have a, have a gambling feel to them, but importantly, they have a gambling feel to them that works for lay people. I know it's not lay people in the audience, but you know they don't, nobody has to know how to play poker or bridge or any of these type of things. So he's got this whole thing of cheating, but anybody could understand it, even if they don't play cards. He's got the big stack, which is a stacking routine, when he talks about stacking, and there are, it's similar to the first routine in a way, um, because it, there's a kicker, a similar kicker at the end where he's, he's found four cards and then he's also found, not in Stellar, but also found the four aces, which again, super strong routine. All of these routines, and I would argue all of the routines in Game Changer, because that's the book I've spent most time with, are commercial. You could take them straight out of the book, straight onto an audience, and in, in a theatre show, parlor show, anything, and they would play super strong. He, he scripted these so strongly these, these and to the point where it's not it doesn't feel scripted where he's it's like you want to you, you, you don't get any of him but I do wish sometimes that he'd come off script and I'm sure he would again with an audience of lay people but you, you, I love these moments where he's kind of doing script and again it feels very much like him and then there's a little aside bit where you, you see kind of break script I'd like to see a little bit more of that from him and again I'm sure we would in, in different situations. I'm going to come back to Catch Me If You Can. There's a Triumph routine. This Triumph is super strong. And I'll say now there are things like Pharaohs involved here. So this isn't beginner stuff. Uh, but that Triumph is really, really clever. It's a different take on it. It's, it kind of and it, it reminded me how good that Daryl display is. You know, when I see anybody do it and I haven't seen it for a while, you go, that is really... Uh, it's, we, we forget how good it is. It's such a beautiful display of the cards. Totally disarming. Uh, and the way he does it is even more disarming. You can't believe that that... I almost, when I first saw it, I almost felt similarly, it's very different to when I first saw Danny Ortiz do his triumph. I was like, how did, how did that happen? Even though you can follow it to a certain level, it kind of loses you. Oh, and Liar Liar is this lovely idea of teaching a card trick to them, telling you how it's done, and then saying that he, he does one shuffle and it gets the whole deck in order and then he can see what's cards missing and he gets the audience to, to stop him. Make sure you stop me when I'm just about to shuffle. Tell me, to stop shuffling and I'll show you where I am. And of course he does this whole thing of, of shuffling anyway and then going oh you were too slow and he does it with a spectator but it's constant running gag it feels a bit like the it's behind you thing of a pantomime you know the audience start getting involved uh, and again I'd love to have seen uh, with, a, with, a, with that energy but Catch Me If You Can I just think is a they're all great but Catch Me If You Can is such a good routine it's a card to wallet without it, it being an ambitious card or anything like that and it's one of my favourite out of the book as well is that you have three games you're playing with the spectator and there's so much great challenge built into this that you know they're all re um, response games three of those games and he starts saying right there's a hundred dollars in this and actually usually when a magician says that we go well, you know, of course he's gonna, but gonna lose but you I did think there was a moment where you go well he could and that's really important with this routine even though he's not going to and you know he's not going to there is a moment where you go actually he he could lose this because it, it was quite close and I really like the way he builds that into it. Um, and I love, I've seen the routine live and I think that I really want to do it and because I think it would just play so well. And then it finishes with card to wallet, not card to envelope and all this sort of thing, just a really nice card to wallet and it all looks great. And, uh, and when I watched it, I kind of got a that little memory of when I first saw card to wallet, when you just undo the thing, it comes out and it's just lovely. So they're the routines. His teaching's great. Is the, what I really like about it is the learning you can get sort of in, in, from sort of in be, reading between the lines. That's what I'm trying to say. Is that you? You know, he, he's got two people up there for the whole thing, and he always engages them. Yes, they'll be left for a bit, but he'll always come back to them and use them. And there's not this thing, even though people have accused him of kind of having this arrogance, but by really not understanding what he's doing because it's clearly part of the part of the thing. Um, he, he has a respect for his audience members, even though he's ribbing them and doing all that stuff and kind of going, oh, you know, you should have got me there and you're, you're keeping me honest and all this. He's actually got a lot of respect for them, which I really, really like. Um, and when he brings people out, they don't feel like props. They feel like part of the show. Someone actually said to me, you know, they, they, hate, they hate this stuff and, the, and the, the front cover of the book's really cringeworthy. Oh, my God, like, you know, women and cigars. Yeah, I know if it was serious, I would agree. But to me... And I, I don't think I'm wrong, that it is kind of purposely, he's built, building this whole persona, you know, with the car and the kind of look. And, and actually, when you meet him in real life, he's very down to earth and cool. He isn't like that at all. So that's when you know it is a persona. Uh, but I really, like, I really like this. I learned a lot from it. It re-energised uh, me to get back to that 
uh, catch me if you can routine because I really really like it and I think anybody who's a sleight of hand card person will get a lot out of this and saying that it is not beginner stuff this is doable but there are slights involved there's certain shuffles there's doubles a um, couple of pharaohs so you know it's it's good I think if you can't quite do that stuff to to find routines where you go actually that's a good reason to learn that and especially pharaoh wise it took me a long time to find pharaoh routines uh, routines that were worthy of me learning it but you see this and you go okay it's a good it's a good goal to get to. So if you can't quite do that stuff, maybe it's worth having a look at too. So uh, there we go. Ladani live in London. Uh, any questions, do let me know. And I'll talk about them on the live shows on Thursday evenings. But do like, subscribe, check out Card Magic Course. And uh, have a great one. Cheers.